One of motion graphics' greatest strengths is its ability to visualize complex data in order to make it more relatable. In this movie, we'll show you how to use MASH to create and animate a 3D histogram that conveys employment and income data in the state of New York. This tutorial assumes you are familiar with the basics of Maya and MASH. If you're just getting started in either, see the Maya documentation or the Maya Learning Channel for help on both. To create a 3D histogram, we'll first need a 2D color map as a base. We've already created a couple representing household income and unemployment rates using the interactive web map on the CDC's website, with information gleaned from the U.S. Census Bureau. In both cases, we converted the maps to grayscale and inverted the colors so that high values are represented by light shades and low values are represented by dark ones. We'll also need a two-tone black and white version for our base as well. Now in Maya, create a cube as the base object for our MASH network. We're going to use MASH to first shape a bunch of these cubes like New York State, and then scale them up according to our data maps. However, if you just try using the scale tool to scale this cube up, you'll notice that it scales in both directions. To change that, we'll need to adjust the pivot point. Translate the cube up 0.5 units so that it sits on the grid. Now in the pivot section, zero out the world space rotate and scale pivots. This puts the pivot point back on the origin again. Go to Modify, Freeze Transformations to set this as the cube's default state. Now the cube scales properly. Create a mesh network and make sure the geometry type is set to mesh. Give it a grid distribution of 400 by 400 in both distance and number of objects in the X and Y axes. Now that we have a starting grid, let's shape it like New York by hiding all the cubes outside the state's borders. Go back to the waiter and add a visibility node. In the strength map section, assign the two tone black and white version of our 2D image. By default, Maya assigns a map projection axis of Y, which correctly hides any cubes corresponding to the black areas of our image. Now that we have our base shape, we can start scaling the cubes based on our demographic data. Since we're performing a scale operation, you can add an offset node to the scale attribute. Set the offset to 0, 100, 0. This scales all the cubes equally at first. In order to get them to scale variably, we can just use the exact same method we did for the visibility. Assign a strength map and use the annual income image to drive it. As before, a Y projection axis already assigns the map correctly. Thanks to our 2D image, peaks represent areas of higher income, while valleys represent areas of low income. Now we can animate this by setting keys on its random strength attribute. Here we'll go from a value of 0 to 1 over frames 34 to 54. Unfortunately, the sheer number of objects makes viewing this animation interactively a bit slow, so let's do a batch render. Go to the Render Settings window and change the current renderer to Maya Hardware 2.0. Also set the image format to PNG, Frame Animation Extension to Name Number Extension, and Frame Range from 1 to 60. Then from the Rendering menu set, go to Render, Batch Render. Once Maya completes the batch render, go to File, View Sequence to view the image sequence. It's not a bad start, but it's not very lively. Let's add a bit of bounce to the animation, as well as some color. Adding bounce to the animation is as easy as adding a spring node via the waiter. 
we'll raise the damping to 0.35 to ensure the spring isn't too overbearing. Next, let's add a bit more color. The first thing you can do is turn on screen space ambient occlusion via the panel toolbar. This will increase the number of shadows. However, we'll want to add some actual color via the color node unique to the mesh geometry type. To use this, we'll first need to go to the repro node and enable color per vertex. This is because coloring is handled via Maya's vertex data. You also need to select the repro mesh and turn on its color per vertex display, which you can do via the modeling menu set under mesh display, toggle display colors attribute. Once that's done, go back to the mash node and enable its color node. Now you can use the color attribute to adjust the tone of the cubes. Since New York's official color is gold, let's go with that. Finally, let's add both an ambient light and directional light to give the scene a bit more illumination. Before batch rendering again, go back to the render settings and turn on Apply Output Transform to Renderer. This is necessary for the Hardware 2.0 renderer to ensure the same color management is applied to both the workspace and output render. Also increase the frame range to 80 to accommodate the extra spring we're adding. Now try batch rendering and viewing the animation again. This is definitely more lively than last time. The spring node has added a bit more flair to our animation, and the color pops nicely. However, even with the lights, we're not getting a ton of contrast in the colors. Wouldn't it be nice if we could shade them according to their heights? Go back to the Mash Color node. As we've been doing with the visibility and offset nodes, we can apply a strength map here to shade the regions using our 2D references. However, rather than just assigning the file straight, let's do it as a layered texture. This will allow us to animate between color patterns, which is useful because we'd like to shade the state according to the current graphs being shown. Start by assigning a file to the current color and loading the two-tone black and white state image. This doesn't change anything yet. Now return to the Layered Texture node. Click to the right of the blue rectangle, representing the current layer. This creates a new layer. Repeat the previous steps for this layer, except load the Household Earnings image. Again return to the Layered Texture node. Select the first layer again, and set its Blend Mode to Over. Now if you adjust the alpha value, you can see how the straight yellow pattern transitions to the shaded earnings layer underneath. Animate this value going from 1 to 0 from frames 34 to 54. These are exactly the same frames as our scaling animation, which means the colors will transition at the same time the histogram is being updated. Finally, add a polygon plane and scale it to act as a base. Now batch render again. Now we get a nice color transition at the same time our histogram animates. Now using what you've learned, you can try adding a second set of data for the unemployment rate image. For that you'll need to expand the time slider. Then reverse the current scaling to return the cubes to their original sizes. Apply and animate a new offset node using a strength map of the unemployment image. And add a new layer to the layer texture using the same map. Remember to set the previous layer's blend mode to over and use its alpha to transition at the appropriate time. You can repeat this process to show as many changing data types as you like. 
and then add some camera motion to finish it off.